Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I would like to share a few thoughts with you about one, the four transcendentals or attributes of God. Two, my favorite painting of Jesus. And three, how I and you can pray with it. But before doing so, here's a little bit about me. I'm Thomas, and while going to college at the University of Florida, Go Gators, I entered fully into the Catholic Church. Oh, that was my phone. As a Catholic, I consider myself a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I have a deep love for Jesus, and I desire to fully follow after him and do his will more and more every day. And for the purposes of this video, one final detail about me is that after I graduated from the University of Florida, I entered the seminary and prayerfully discerned a vocation to the Catholic priesthood. During my four years in the seminary, I got halfway through before leaving and becoming a math teacher. This said, in Catholic seminary, before studying theology, they require that you earn a bachelor's degree in philosophy. And it is in my philosophy classes that I learned about the first topic of this video, which is the four transcendentals. The root word in transcendentals is transcend. And here I would like to highlight that in order for us to experience God and his attributes, we must transcend ourselves and go beyond our five senses. We must leave the natural or physical and visible realm and enter into the supernatural, spiritual, and invisible realm. Hence, our need for the four transcendentals, which are love, goodness, truth, and beauty. And these are none other than the very attributes of God himself. We say that God is love. We say that God is goodness. We say that God is truth. And we say that God is beauty. Now, this also... Uh, speaks to us about who we are as human beings. And in philosophy, we talk about how human beings have a human heart, a human will, free will, a human mind and intellect, and a human imagination. It is these things that draw us to these transcendentals, these attributes of God. So we can say that God is love, and with his love, he speaks to our human hearts. We could also say that God is good, and with his goodness, he speaks to our human will and asks us to imitate him and be perfect and holy as he is perfect and holy. We also say that God is truth, and here... God uses truth, his truth, and with it he speaks to our minds, our intellects. He's the good teacher, and he teaches us his truth. And then with beauty, we say that God is beautiful. God is beauty, and with his beauty he speaks to our human imagination. He captivates our imaginations and our dreams and our desires. These are the ways in which God draws us to himself. But here I would like to focus on the fourth transcendental, beauty. Here we can include things like language arts, visual arts, theater, music, etc. Through these venues, God reveals himself to us and draws us closer to himself so that we can experience a deeper and more relationship, more 
real, I'm sorry, more real relationship with him. And this is the basis for me wanting to share with you today about my favorite painting of Jesus, how I pray with it, and how we can use it to bring ourselves closer to Jesus. So let me go ahead and share my screen, at least this part. I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to put a half screen to finish reading a little bit here. And I want to just say here, and this is where I am in my text, that my favorite painting of Jesus is called the Divine Mercy Image. By looking at this painting and praying with it, we can learn about the merciful heart of Jesus and thus grow to love him all the more. And this is exactly what I want to show you now. So, this is the image of divine mercy. And through it, we can learn a little bit about God, Jesus, and his mercy. One of the first things you might notice down on the very bottom, and here I'm going to put my cursor so that you can see. On the very bottom, you see the words, Jesus, I trust in you. We believe that in our fallen state, our primordial sin, our most basic and fundamental sin is pride. And it is through pride that we tend to not trust in Jesus, but to instead rely in and trust in ourselves. And in many ways, all of us, all of us, attempt to be self-sufficient, do things for ourselves, create our own identity, create our own happiness. And when we are trying to do things by ourselves, what we're doing is we're pushing Jesus out. And in a very real way, we are not trusting in him. And so the very first thing I like to do when I pray with this image is I like to just repeat to myself over and over again. This is called centering prayer. I'd like to repeat to myself, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. And I do that as often as I need to, for as long as I need to. There are some days that are really tough, and I need to remind myself to trust in him. And so sometimes it takes a little longer for me to really get in that mindset, enter into that prayer, and truthfully say, in my heart of hearts, Jesus, I trust in you. After that, I kind of go up the painting. And the first thing I want us to notice is down here, you see the feet of Jesus. And when I contemplate the feet of Jesus in this painting, one of the things that I remember is that, first of all, Jesus leads the way. And I'm supposed to follow after him. And so I ask myself, kind of examine myself a little bit, 
today. And I allow you, Jesus, to lead and guide me. And did I follow after you? I also noticed that one foot, the left foot of Jesus, happens to be, it, it, it appears like he's taken a step forward. And it appears that he's coming to me in my direction. This helps me remember that it is not I who chose Jesus, but Jesus who chose me. Jesus is always the one who initiates my relationship with him and his relationship with me. He is the one who calls me and brings me closer to himself. Even when I'm running away from him, he chases after me. And therefore, I can thank Jesus. So thank you, Jesus. for coming after me. Thank you for chasing me, even when I run away from you. Thank you for taking the first step and bringing me closer to you, even when I was far away from you. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. As we go up the painting, we see the white robe that Jesus is wearing. The white robe reminds me of both the beginning of life and the end of life. Baptism, being born again through the baptismal waters and the spirit. And during our baptism, we all wear a white robe. And we're given that white robe of holiness, of sanctification, of justification. And through our lives, this reminds me when I'm looking at the painting that we're supposed to cherish our baptism. And we're supposed to keep our robes white and clean and unstained. It also leads me to recall that at the end of my life, when I see Jesus face to face, and when, God willing, he says the words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into my kingdom, my father's house. And he says those words, I will have a glorified body, and I will, in that moment, be given a heavenly robe. A robe of holiness, a white robe for heaven. Now we go up, and we see these two, and they're called rays, rays of light, and we hear here we have a red light, and we have a pale light. Pale, in some paintings it's blue, but in this painting it's white. And here the red ray stands for the blood of Jesus. And the pale ray stands for or symbolizes water. We know that when Jesus was on the cross, he was pierced. So he was pierced in his heart and on his side. And it is through that piercing that the very last drops of his blood and water gush forth. And this painting reminds me that Jesus allowed his heart, right here, his heart, to be pierced for us. He allowed himself to experience a deep 
pain in his heart. And in that room, he gave us everything. On the cross, he gave us everything. He gave us his whole self. And what does he do? He gives it and gives it and gives it forever and ever and ever. He gives it all of it, the very last, last drops of it. He gives until he can give no more. He dies for us. So here I remember the blood and water that gushed forth from his heart and how he did not withhold even the last drops. He gave it all and sacrificed it all for our sake so that he could save us. We also know that the red ray, it stands for his blood, which is what cleanses us and gives us true life. It's the blood of Jesus that saves us. And it's also the water, holy water, the water that helps us be cleansed all the more through baptism, baptismal waters. These are all ways in which Jesus helps us to keep our robe of baptism and our heavenly robe, spotless, to keep us clean for our whole lives and into eternity. This is how he gives us his life and himself. Now, if we look, we see his left hand, he's actually opening his robe and he wants to show us his heart and he wants to draw us into his heart and bring us close to his chest close to his beating heart so that we can experience his love for us and so sometimes when i'm praying with this image i just ask jesus to bring me close help me experience his love let me feel your love today jesus Sometimes when I feel very far away from him, this image helps me to experience him drawing me closer to him. I, can, I might even say to Jesus, I feel real far from you right now, Jesus. But I know and I have faith and I trust in you, Jesus. And I trust that you are close and that you are drawing me closer to you. Even though I feel like we're far apart, I know that you are with me. And I ask that I be with you. Give me the grace to be present to you, Jesus, and to feel your love. We see here on his right hand, it's kind of extended. And here in the Catholic Church, priests all the time put out their hands and they give us a blessing and this is kind of how i look at this painting and how i imagine maybe jesus blessing me when i'm praying with this image here first of all i ask myself god did i receive your blessings today or did i reject them did i say yes to you jesus or did i say no and then as I kind of reflect on that, I also try to recall all the blessings that God gave me. I also try to even be thankful and give him gratitude and start to praise him for his goodness to me. Thank you for that blessing, Jesus. Thank you for allowing me to experience another day. Thank you for your mercy, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this blessing and that blessing. And this might be the 
the longest part of my prayer time, where I'm just thanking God for his blessings and remembering that he's continuously blessing me every day, every minute, all the time. And I ask God for his grace and mercy. Help me, Jesus, say yes to your blessings and receive them and not to reject them. Help me, help me, help me. Jesus, I trust in you. Of course, we go up the painting and we see, we see his halo, the halo of Jesus representing his divinity and also his holiness and sanctity. And we see his face. Uh, we've all heard it said that the windows to the soul are the eyes. The eyes are the windows to the soul. And I, I just, I like to look into the eyes of Jesus. I like to look at his face. And I like to, through this image, kind of imagine what it would be like if I were in Jesus' presence. You know, maybe if I lived with Jesus, with the disciples, when he actually was on earth. I got to see him face to face. I got to look in his eyes, you know, and really experience the depth of his, his soul, his heart, his divinity, and his humanity. And so just kind of experiencing the intimacy and the love that can be shared just through a gaze. I'm gazing at Jesus. Jesus is gazing back at me. And we're both sharing that moment of intimacy and that moment of love. And the final thing I'll point out uh, as far as this image and how I like to pray with it is we notice that in this image, Jesus is surrounded by nothing but the utter darkness. It's black. But we also see that in the midst of the outer darkness, we experience the fact that Jesus himself is light, and he gives us his light. He brings us into the light and a lot of times when i'm praying this especially after a difficult day maybe even a day where i was weak and fell to sin and temptation or whatever where i'm experiencing my own inner darkness i ask jesus and i beg jesus jesus please be merciful please come into my heart please Dispel my darkness and bring your light. Shine your light on me, Jesus, and let me experience your illumination. Let me experience your light, your kingdom, your kingdom of light. So as you can see, uh, this is a very beautiful, beautiful painting of Jesus, and it has lots of depth, lots of meaning, and it really, through its beauty, can draw us closer to God. It helps us transcend. It helps us to really experience the spiritual reality of who Jesus is for us. And the fact that he is merciful and that we can trust in him. By way of conclusion, I would like to just say that I really hope that you got something out of this video. I really hope that you do some research on the Divine Mercy image and that through the Divine Mercy devotion, 
you're able to grow deeper in your relationship with Jesus Christ and have a real relationship with him, with God the Father and with the Holy Spirit. If you have an image that you have in your prayer life, one that maybe is one of your favorite paintings that reminds you of God and his love for us, share in the comments below. Maybe, maybe I can do another uh, video like this one with different images. Um, and really pray with the images and encounter Jesus through his beauty. So uh, let me know what your thoughts are. And uh, I look forward to the next video. God bless and be at peace. Jesus loves you. We can trust in him and experience his mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.